I'm really excited for the future of Old School RuneScape. There's so many good updates planned. They're working on a brand new skill, the sailing skill, and honestly, I'm pretty excited about that. In the summertime, we're going to be getting Desert Treasure 2, which will have a ton of new bosses. And uh, maybe with sailing, we'll get a new underwater raid. Who knows? So today, I'm going to be covering some of the updates and going through the game jam of concept ideas that could get introduced into the game. First of all, I want to say, pretty much at all times now, unless it's like really late at night, there's like over 100,000 people online, which is just so good to see. Okay, so we're going to quickly go over the game jam. So basically, these are only um, concepts, right? These are not for sure going to be getting into the game, but some of them are so good that I really just want them to be into the game. And a lot of them, I also feel like they're they wouldn't be voted no maybe some of them but you know so first of all they want to do a wind inspired boss that's pretty interesting um and then they want to add some more of the quests like the path of gluffery some more quests that's obviously good as well right just extra quests into the game is always a good thing in my opinion anyways and then they want to do the wilderness rejuvenation project so what this is going to look like is a lot of different changes to the wilderness now why this is good is because the wilderness always needs updates for the pkers and keeping them happy and stuff like that also it looks like there was going to be some slayer upgrades for the wilderness which is really cool now this is one thing i really want to go over this right here is called the rat king and it's going to be a free to play mechanic based boss i think this is amazing why is this such, such a good thing is because free to play really doesn't have too much going for it i mean i guess there's like the moss giant boss that's free to play i'm pretty sure but yeah this is just insane so this will have it looks like they're gonna have all three combat styles i'm assuming um th that's how it's gonna work but this boss looks insane i'd love to get a pet like that it looks like here's gonna be the area where you're gonna fight it uh and yeah it just looks insane and it would be really cool so i'm assuming it's not going to be a super complicated boss because of the fact that it is going to be free to play but who knows it could have some really cool unique drops maybe be a great money making method for the free to play players and overall i think it's just a great update especially might even get some people that enjoy it to upgrade to the members version okay so next on this list here is beehives now it looks like you can start to, I guess, technically farm honey, which is interesting. And it was saying that the Hespori will drop a new bottomless honey bucket. It was saying that there's going to be, I think it was seven different types of honey that we can make. And they will have different effects. I'm not exactly sure. This is obviously just a concept um, right now. But, you know, why not add this into the game? Just something extra to do. The next one is the new wildlife now this is really cool because we never got the taming so this is adding more creatures into the game yeah it doesn't look like we're going to be able to tame them but uh they can be hunted fed or simply admired from afar so maybe they'll add a bunch of these new creatures to random islands or whatever with the sailing skill i think that would be really cool and here's uh something walking around right there um this is another one that i thought was amazing so they want to make a hunter guild and great hunts uh so yeah I, I i'm a huge supporter of guilds for every single skill in the game and i was gonna be making a video about hunter needing an update very soon but yeah this uh will have different methods for training the hunter skill and just a good place to do it new items into the game honestly go ahead and read this we've also yeah players just doing the birdhouse runs all the way so they kind of want hunter to actually be a skill that people train rather than just passively train with birdhouse runs and the next thing i am extremely excited for mastery caves this is something i've been wanting in the game for a very long time the completionist cape is an item that players can obtain once they've completed a set number of requirements and additional tasks which will show that the player has completed majority of the content in the game is an, is and is a true runescape master yes this is something i've always really wanted in old school but this could actually uh, happen but they're going to be calling it the mastery cape um, I'm pretty sure you're going to have to get like points or something as well, but the base requirements for a mastery cape would be like a max total level, so obviously 99 in all skills, all quests completed, all achievement diaries completed, 
all music tracks unlocked excluding the holiday ones i guess they don't want to have to lock you like say you don't have the christmas ones and it's like february you have to wait till next year that'd be kind of weird so that's cool um the elite combat achievements so i'm definitely gonna have to get on those i think i have the hard right now so i need to get up to the elite and then we should be good with that 50 percent of mastery max mastery points now i'm assuming that's the points that we get with this update They'd also like to pitch a trimmed one in the future, which would be 85%, which is crazy. So it looks like it's going to be broken down into this little beautiful graph, which is amazing. I like how this looks. So basically, it's kind of like the combat achievements, a little task bar right here. And then you have the sections, which is skilling, um, combat, clues, exploration, other. Now, is other going to be kind of like the tasks you need to complete for the completionist cave? Please don't have it to be like 2000 games of Castle Wars. That would really suck. Uh, but I do like how this is laid out and it will show you what you have left to do, which is awesome. Um, to avoid making the mastery cave the best in slot. Okay. Um, equal to the max cape in terms of stats and features so i'm assuming you can just combine it with the other cape similar to the max cape so it's never best in slots so definitely really like how this looks um it's basically exactly like the completionist cape something that i've just wanted in the game for a long time especially once you've been maxed for a long time uh wanting to push yourself farther and go for more goals is something that i'm a huge fan of rather than just experience goals or items this will actually like kind of feel like you're making progress on the account again now the next one i'm a huge fan of as well this is age account rewards so this is basically just cosmetic i don't know why i'm extremely excited about it it's just a cosmetic thing um so basically you'll get i don't know if it's gonna be halos but it's gonna be something and then there's gonna be a five year 10 year 15 20 year and beyond i know runescape 3 does this where you have like a five year anniversary cape so all it really does is it shows you how old your account is it won't have any stats or anything it'll just be something cool you can wear so people will know that you've had your account for say 10 years very interesting i don't see why this wouldn't ever pass now this one is huge, so graceful skilling outfits. So the problem is everyone who hears graceful all of the time when they're doing farm runs, while they're training rune crafting, whatever it might be, and the actual skill outfit that you get for the skill, like the farming outfit, the smithing outfit, or the rune crafters outfit, you don't tend to use because graceful is just so much better, and you would run out of run energy to make it less experience per hour. You get the idea. So I think they want to combine skilling and graceful outfits. I'm not sure how this would work if you'd say use a piece of graceful on the skilling outfit and then you can like reverse it somehow. I don't think you're going to have to get 10, 10 sets of graceful for all of them. Who knows? Maybe that's what they want. But this is just some concept art. I Again, this, does, this seems like an update that would 100% pass. I don't see why it wouldn't. It just is a win-win for pretty much everybody. And some of them look pretty damn cool in my opinion. Okay, next we're going to be talking about sailing, everything that they've done to it so far. So there's a little introduction to what they've done, and this is the start of the refining steps. Okay, so boarding your ship, it's going to be with ports, which is really cool. So I guess you dock it at a port, and they will be would be the primary way to access the sailing skill, of course. So there's going to be islands, however, um, will be likely places around the world where you don't want to be able to dock your ship. Okay, that's kind of interesting too, right? Maybe you, it's sketchy or something. I'm assuming we can use anchors and stuff like that as well. So once you've um, obtained a ship and boarded it from a port, you'll be able to start sailing out into the open seas by making use of the navigation navigation system so it is going to be a point and click which i am a huge fan of i was kind of weird uh weirded out with the wasd interface and stuff like that so uh there's going to be many options uh so you could use that if you like but we, we do get the good old point and click system and uh your character will also be able to move or to kind of walk freely on the ship right so you can move your character and then also go into a different place where you can move the ship i think that's really important i'm not sure how you're gonna be able to do both at the exact same time but you can switch back and forth um and then you it's the same as walk here so you know click sail here so that's gonna be really interesting i can't wait to have like a beta for this to actually just test it ourselves Okay, so the next slide here is talking about facilities. It won't just be the ship's wheel that you can interact with. The ships will have a number of interactive facilities. That's really cool. Um, this includes everything from cannons, cargo holds, crow's nests, or even 
ship's kitchens. I guess that's cool because you're if I guess on the bigger ships you're gonna have to provide food for all the crew members and then different ship types ranging from small to large. Um, here's the ship information which is really cool so the number of players that will actually be able to go on the ship um, the gameplay complexity the optimal area of use the number of facilities um, approximate size the max height the base sailing speed and the base turning speed and here's the three different types of boats that they gave as an example i'm sure there'll be a ton more but it will show you like a small boat is for solo or tiny groups, simple gameplay, two to three facilities, one floor, and all this kind of stuff. And as you can see, the large boat moves up to say four to six facilities. Uh, moves a little bit slower though, but it's for smaller groups. Could be solo as well. And uh, for the open seas instead of the shallow seas. And then this massive boat right here could be for solo or groups, advanced gameplay, deep seas, 8 to 10 facilities, huge place to walk around, 3 floors, so it's got like a basement, a middle, and I guess the top. <laughs> Unless it means the upper, I don't know exactly, but that moves a lot slower than the other boats. And for 90 degrees, it takes 6 ticks, just because it's so big, right? This one is talking about the turning uh, circles, different ways of uh, sailing speed, how it's exactly going to work, um, different motions of the ship, and uh, collision that could eventually happen. You gotta, I guess, navigate it good in the harder areas of the game, um, or the ocean, I guess I should say. Um, and then eventually they might be talking about where you could have like a ship-based PvP combat experience. I don't know how this exactly would work, but it, it does sound interesting. Now the next slide here talks about the map and that it will not be instant, so you're going to be able to see other people sailing, which is awesome. Um, they might have to like change some things with scaling, that doesn't really make sense for lore. So there's going to be ocean zones. Um, we'd look at categorizing all oceans into three distant zones. So there's going to be shallow seas, open seas, and deep seas. And we're going to have to deal with weather conditions in different uh, zones. This one was actually huge to think about. So quest islands, a number of islands that are otherwise quest locked would still remain as such with the simple answer. If you try to sail there before completing the respective quest, the locals would simply prevent you from docking at the port. This might include places like the Lunar Island and Mostly harm Harmless. So yeah, obviously you're not going to be able to get there. So you, this is what Crandor would look like. And I guess that's what it would look like on your map, which is cool. I don't want it to be like game breaking where you can go to places without completing the quest make some really weird peers or whatever um mystery locations another issue is regarding places that we are supposed to be unknown to you um prior to the certain point in the game such as Crandor. uh one solution could be that uh when approaching Crandor before completing dragon slayer quest the island might be surround uh what shrouded in a dense fog or perhaps Elvark himself might swoop down and rain fire upon you okay forcing you to turn around i like that a lot because again it would just ruin the lore of the game so the actual skill progression existing location shouldn't be the only time we consider using different types of ocean boundaries some would instead be tied to sailing skill progression so that makes a lot of sense so you know you can't go to like the best island in the game with like level 10 sailing um, and then they have to deal with map edges, of course, right? Because the, the world map is a little weird and there's some black parts to it. Maybe they could expand this, um, which would be cool. Now, Jagex said in the news post that they partnered with this guy right here on Twitter. I'm not sure if this is real or if it's just like a concept right now. So this would be kind of what the ocean might look like eventually. I don't know if this ever is going to be into the game, but it does look pretty cool. There's This is in between um, Zaya and I guess the regular mainland right here is like Nezi Knot, uh, Eagle's Peak, stuff like that where you fish the monkfish over here. So this is all like new places, like there's so many cool things like the shattered brambles, Kraken nest, <laughs> like a merchant vessel, that's so cool. There's a place to mine there it looks like, strong currents, uh, little pirates place here, that's already in the game. Um, Sunken city, I don't know if that's a fairy ring thing to get there, I'm not sure um just so much cool stuff the endless storm that kind of reminds me of the thing in the wilderness but uh this could just be completely a concept but it does look pretty cool 
I'm really excited, honestly, for the future of Old School RuneScape. There wasn't one thing in there that I disagree with or hate. Maybe I didn't love everything, but some of those ideas, man, would just change the game for me. Like, I would love if they added a completionist cape into the game. I totally really like that free-to-play rap boss. There's just so many cool updates. I'm... I'm 100% uh, all in for adding more quests to the game, even if they are ones from like the old RuneScape or whatever that might be. I'm always just add more content to the game, right? It gives us stuff to do, gives other players different account builds that they could build. I'm really excited for sailing and I definitely hope sailing does fully get into the game. I don't know how long away it could be. Who knows? It could be over another year from now, but we've got Desert Treasure 2 to look forward to in the summer and that'll have four brand new bosses for us to uh, grind out for hundreds and hundreds of hours while they uh, update the sailing skill and it gets into the game for us. I'm just really, really excited. Um, Every update that they've been pushing out lately has just been solid. There wasn't an update recently or that seems to be coming in the future where I'm just like, oh, this is terrible. I can't, this sucks, right? It's just been solid. Thank you so much, Jagex. Honestly, it's really looking like the future of old school will just continue to grow. And like I said, every time I check, there's over 100,000 active players online. That just makes me so happy. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching the video today. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of these updates and what you think of sailing, what your favorite part of sailing is, and what your favorite one of those uh, game jam ideas might be added into the game. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much, and I will catch you in the next one. See ya later.